If gaming on the Mister is so much fun, then why keep it all to yourself? So today, we're going to take a look at some multiplayer snack adapters so you can bring other people in on the fun. All right, a few weeks ago, I did a bit of a deep dive on Mr. Snack Adapters to help you understand how they work and how to use them. There's been so many different options available for snacks, and it can be quite confusing. So if you haven't already seen it, you should go check out my previous Snack Adapter video. But today, I want to revisit the topic of snacks, and I want to help you understand how to use them in case you want to play with a friend or an enemy. Several months ago, there were some new snack boards added to the GitHub repo. This included two player versions of both the NES and SNES snacks. So I ordered a few boards from one of those PCB manufacturers, along with some console connectors from AliExpress and some USB 3 ports from Amazon. So let's solder them up and check them out. I'm going to start with the two player NES adapter. If you watched my previous snack video, you saw that I had a lot of trouble with the NES snack that I bought pre-made because the pins in the NES connector just weren't making good contact with the controller. By making my own, I can make sure that I'm using a better NES controller port that'll likely work. Now, this adapter, along with the other adapters I'm looking at today, are all passive boards. These PCBs just map the pins from the USB port to the correct pins on the controller port. Because of that, these are super easy to build yourself, as long as you're comfortable with a little surface mount soldering. To get your hands on some PCBs, you first need to download the Gerber files from the GitHub repo. When you download them, they'll be saved on your computer as a zip file. From there, you just need to go to your favorite PCB maker and upload the zip file. I typically use JLC PCB because they're inexpensive and I usually have boards in hand within 10 days of placing the order. As you can see here, the cost for five of these two player NES boards is only $2, which isn't a bad deal at all at 40 cents a piece. In addition to the PCBs, you also need connectors for the controller ports. The best place to find these is on AliExpress. I already had some NES controller ports on hand, which I ordered from AliExpress several months ago, but I didn't have any Super Nintendo controller ports, so I did have to order those. I paid somewhere around 70 cents a piece for each of those ports. The last part you need is the USB port. The type of port you need here is a 9-pin surface mount USB 3 port. The version of ports that these snack PCBs use are about 50 cents a piece from Amazon. So all in total, it takes somewhere around two to three dollars in parts to build a snack adapter, depending on which ports you're using. To build the two-player NES board, we'll need the PCB, one USB port, and two NES ports. I'm first soldering on the USB port so I can work with it before I crowd the board with the NES connectors. These USB ports have these little plastic nubs on them that prevent them from sitting flush with the board, so we first have to clip these off. And then I use the table to gently bend the pins downward this way, they'll make good contact with the pads on the PCB. I first soldered one side of the larger through-hole pins while adjusting the board to make sure that the connector was on straight. After soldering the other pin, I flipped the board over and soldered the surface mount USB connector pins. I then double checked it with an eye loop to make sure that I didn't bridge any pins. If so, I would have just used some desoldering wick to clean it up. The NES ports that I had on hand all used these angled pins, so I had to straighten those out first. And then I soldered both ports onto the board.
and that's it. There aren't any components to solder onto this board, so it's really just that simple. Well, let's try it out. Now, it took me a bit of trial and error to figure out what the right settings are for both controllers to work with the Mister. The two-player snacks make use of the seventh GPIO pin for data. So if you're using the traditional Mister stack, you'll need to make sure that the IO6 jumper is set to IO. And you'll need to set the jumper that's on the level shifter board, which connects pin seven. Now, if you're using the Mister Multi system, you'll need to set switch seven up front to the left, and that puts it into IO mode. But unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work correctly when using the Multi system's built-in level shifter. You'll notice here that when I hold down the button on the second player's controller, the button presses repeat. And when the character in Double Dragon walks, there's a bit of a stuttering in a step. Now this leads me to think that there's some sort of IO conflict that's happening here. However, if you disable the built-in level shifter by changing JP17 to 5 volts, and use an external level shifter with the jumper set, both players work fine. Okay, now that we have the two-player NES snack working with both the multi-system and the traditional Mr. Stack, let's take a look at the two-player Super NES snack. This board is going to be pretty similar to the NES board. You just need the USB port, the PCB, and two Super NES controller ports. For some reason, I bought the angled SNES ports instead of the straight ones. So I first need to straighten these pins out. And for soldering, we'll approach it the same way by soldering on the USB connector first. And then both SNES controller ports. Again, it's a super simple board to assemble. Okay, we're all done and it looks pretty good. Well, let's give it a try. I figured for the multi-system, we'd probably need the same setup that worked with the two-player NES adapter. So I left the IO6 switch set to the IO setting and left JP17 on five volts. And I plugged in the two-player SNES snack with the external level shifter attached. Well, and the results weren't great. Input on the player one controller was very sporadic, and the player two controller just didn't work at all. So I tried taking the external level shifter out of the equation and re-enabled the internal level shifter. This time, the player one controller responded better, but still wasn't quite right. And still, player two just wasn't working at all. Well, I tried every combination of settings, and I just wasn't able to get both player one and player two working correctly at the same time on the multi-system. It's a big disappointment. I love the multi-system. So it really stinks that I can't use it for two-player Super Nintendo games with a snack. So I turned my attention to the traditional Mr. Stack setup, hoping it would produce better results. I made sure the IO6 jumper was set to input-output and that the jumper on the level shifter was set I plugged it all in. And I was very happy to see that both the player one and the player two controllers worked great. But I do think we need to give this a more thorough test. So I was able to convince my wife to give me a shot at her title in a game of Mortal Kombat 2. I played this game a ton as a kid and I used to be pretty good but every time we play this game together, she wipes the floor with me. I think this is her way of taking out her aggression on me after 20 years of marriage. Ha <laughs> 
Okay, so we've assembled a couple of two-player snack adapters by hand, and they mostly look good. But I want to take some time today to talk about another snack option, and that's called the Snacks with an X, which was created by the folks over at Mr. Add-ons. Now right off the bat, you'll notice that this has two HDMI ports up front, along with an RCA jack, and this funny looking port in the back. If you've never seen one of these before, it's actually a standard USB 3 port. It's called a micro B connector. And you need one of these USB 3 micro B cables to connect it to the snack port on your mister. Now the snacks did come with this one, but there's nothing stopping you from using a different cable if you want, though you should probably use the shortest cable you can find. The two HDMI ports are used for connecting the controller dongles. The Snacks uses the HDMI style connectors instead of the USB 3 versions that you'll find on other snack adapters. And this is actually a pretty smart move from a manufacturing standpoint because these HDMI adapters were already in existence before the Mr. Project in a project called the Bliss Box. The goal of the Bliss Box was to create a universal adapter for all controllers. And to accomplish that, the Bliss Box settled on an HDMI style connector. So if you have a Snacks or another snack adapter that uses the HDMI style ports, you can use the HDMI cables from the Bliss Box. But there is one exception, and the Snacks purchase page states this pretty clearly up front when you purchase one. The PlayStation adapter from the Bliss Box will not work with the Snacks. So if you want to use PlayStation controllers, you need to purchase the PlayStation adapter from Mr. Add-ons directly. Now, at the time that I'm filming this, the cables from the Blissbox website are actually less expensive than the cables from Mr. Add-ons. However, you still have to pay for shipping, and you're already buying the snacks from Mr. Add-ons anyway, so it's probably a wash, or maybe even cheaper, to just add a couple of cables to your snacks order instead of putting in a separate order at the Blissbox website. You might be wondering what this RCA port's for. It's actually for PlayStation gun accessories. Now, I don't have one to test with today, but it's something that I definitely plan on trying out sometime soon. Let's actually take a look inside and see what's on this board. Okay, so right away, you'll notice the array of MOSFETs and the 3.3 volt regulator here. So these components are going to be for the level shifter that's built into the board. And this chip over here is an FP6298. And that is a current mode PWM converter. As a current booster, I believe it's what the Snacks is using for rumble on the PlayStation controller. And well, that looks to be pretty much it. This board's simply a dual port level shifter with a boost circuit. All right, well, there's nothing left to do now but to try it out. And since the Snacks has the level shifter built in, I set jumper J17 on my multi-system back to five volts, and I plugged in the Snacks. I connected an SNES controller to test it, turned it on, enabled Snack in the core, and loaded up a game of Super Adventure Island. And it didn't work. Well, I did buy some NES adapters as well, so let's see if that works. And yep, the NES controller works great. Well, let's be honest. Given the issues that we had with the other multiplayer SNES snack adapter on the multi-system, it's no surprise that the snacks didn't work with the SNES adapter. But I don't think it's a problem with the Snacks itself though. I think it's an issue with the multi-system. So let's try it out with a traditional Mr. Stack setup and see if that works. 
So I plugged the snacks into the Mr. Stack setup, enabled snack support in the SNES core, loaded up a two-player game, and both controllers worked perfectly fine. So this really is an issue with the multi-system and not the snacks itself. Well, none of the two-player SNES snacks seem to work with the multi-system. But you know, the main thing that I wanted to try out with the snacks is the PlayStation adapter. I do have a pair of PlayStation controllers here, so let's fire that one up and see if we can get it to work. So with the multi-system set on five volts and IO6 still set to input-output mode, I plugged in the snacks and the PlayStation controllers. I fired up the PlayStation Core and enabled snack support for both controllers. One of my favorite game genres is racing games, and the Gran Turismo series in particular consumed a copious amount of hours in my college years. And surprisingly, it actually worked. Now, I don't have a DualShock controller, so I can't test Rumble, but the original PlayStation controllers work perfectly, and it feels just like a real PlayStation. And just to verify, I tested it with the traditional Mr. Stack setup as well. And no surprise there, it also worked perfectly. Okay, so here's a recap. Both the two-player NES Snack and the NES Snacks worked fine on both the Mr. Multi system and the traditional Mr. Stack. However, neither the two-player Super NES Snack or Snacks worked correctly on the Multi system but they both worked great in the stack configuration. And the two-player PlayStation Snacks adapter worked great in both systems. I gotta say, if you want a multiplayer experience using snack adapters, you're gonna be best off going with the traditional Mr. Stack. As much as I love the multi-system, it just pains me to say it, it's not the best option for multiplayer snack adapters. And that's just primarily due to the SNES multiplayer adapter not working correctly with it. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me in this look at multiplayer snack adapters. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And until then, go make some cool multiplayer snack adapters for your mister.